and welcome. My name is Ryan O'Rourke and I hope you enjoy. If you have any questions along the way, please feel free to send me a message here on YouTube or on my Facebook page. I'd be more than happy to help out. And if you want to share your work with me, please feel free to leave a link to that or send me a picture. I'd love to see it and help you in any way that I can. All of that being said, let's get into it. Hi guys, so today we are working on a tutorial for a night sky and we are starting with a black canvas which we are applying blue paint to the middle of it and then we are slowly blending it out using a large rounded brush. I'm not using much water because when you use a lot of water you can apply it in a dabbing motion and it'll take paint off the under layers. So we're using a fairly dry brush, we're applying blue paint in the center of the canvas and then we're blending it out in a circular motion. The idea here is that we want the middle of the canvas to be very dense with blue and the edges to be very dark, almost a black still. But we're really trying to create a gradient with very dry paint. And the middle doesn't have to be a fully opaque blue. You know, it can still be slightly see-through. But the idea is definitely that the moon is going to be in the middle and it is going to be emitting all of this light. So you need that middle area to be the most blue, the most prominent. It can't have a lot of black within it. So now again, we're creating a light source for the moon, right? It is emitting all of this light. So I'm mixing white with my blue and I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm applying the pigment in the middle and then I'm blending it outwards, creating a gradient. Last time it was from a blue to a black, this time it is from a whitish blue to a blue. And this is where we're going to place the moon itself. So, but before we do that, we do need to incorporate stars. And we're going to take a nice long brush, some white paint, and add water to it, a lot of water. From there, I'm peeling back the bristles, and I'm letting them go. What this is doing, it's throwing paint onto the canvas and creating a myriad of stars. Now when doing this, you have to keep the brush fairly far back so that it doesn't create a line of stars. You can see at the bottom I did that by mistake. But if you keep your brush farther back, you can do a great job. You can use a lot of water, but that will create the stars to be a little bit larger. So play around with it until you get the consistency you want. Now moving on, we're working on the moon. And here I'm just applying a very watered down version of the moon. So it's going to be a little bit see-through, it's going to be a bit of blue, and that's fine because the moon is going to be a lot of layering. So this first layer is just to get that circular look and ensure we have it where we want. Then I'm taking more white paint and I'm picking an area that I really want to accentuate and I'm dabbing it on in that area and sometimes I'm dragging the paint as well. A lot of this painting has been in a dabbing motion, but here now we're also incorporating a dragging motion with the brush. So I'm dabbing it in different areas and then I'm dragging it out to blend little pieces. Now here you can see I'm also adding blues and darker colors into this moon as well. That's so we can create a little bit of depth within the moon. And you can do this in various areas. You can see that I put it down in a number of places and I've covered it up because I simply wasn't happy with the results and that's fine. We can make mistakes and we can go back and we can fix them. That's something that's really wonderful about painting. Now, something you notice here, I'm going back and I'm covering that white. And it's because here, there really isn't a proper way to do it. It's more of what you like, what you enjoy, the aesthetic that you want to create. So here I'm trying a lot of darker colors, and I will decide that, again, that isn't really what I want. So now, I'll go in with more white, and I'm doing a lot of dabbing this time. I kind of want to insinuate a myriad of craters, but I don't want to actually paint craters because you wouldn't see them from this distance. So you kind of have to imply them. And you do that through more of a rough look here. Now I'm outlining the moon with a very watery blue and then I'm blending it out. And what I'm doing here, I'm trying to give it a very soft glow. I want this moon to be blending out into the sky. There I use my fingers. Finger painting is still acceptable and it is very useful. Do not give up on finger painting. So again, we have a very nice sharp moon, and then it blends out into a white, into a blue, into a black. From there, we are working on our clouds. And these clouds are going to be very cartoonish looking. And that's fine, it almost has an illustration look, and it's a good place to start. 
So what we're doing, we're creating very flat clouds using a mixture of blue, white, and black. And we're just getting the general shape on it. Now I do have a tutorial in the description, it's about 12 minutes long and it's in depth about how to paint clouds, but we'll do the short version here. Now what I'm doing here, I'm just doing multiple layers, I'm building up the bright areas because I want it to be um, not see-through. and then I want to create depth in it. So I'm putting dark areas on the bottom and I want to create the top areas to be bright because the top areas are going to be getting light from the moon itself. So what I'm doing here, I'm putting in blacks at the bottom, I'm blending them up in gradients, I'm putting whites at the top of the clouds, I'm blending them down in gradients, and the bottoms are generally fairly flat while the tops are very bumpy. And what we're doing, we are adding white in strokes and then I'm blending it down through strokes and on occasion I also do a dabbing motion. Now the dabbing motion at this size will make it look like there's a lot more detail in it. It'll look like there's a lot going on in that little area. But you don't want to do too much of it. You still want those hard, nice strokes from the white itself. And you notice that I keep going back over the tops and adding more white. That is important. And we're just creating as many little bumps as we can. The more little um, uh, infrequent pieces, the more it'll look real. And we're, it will look like a fair illustration here, but if you really want realism, I implore you to continuously add more. That's the whole idea here. If you want it to look more real, add more detail, add more texture, which means more of a dabbing motion and more little bumps. But here you'll notice now the bottoms are all fairly dark, the tops are all fairly white, and in between you have a bunch of movement. Much more at the top cloud at this point. And see, we're blending a lot. It doesn't all have to be hard. All of the dabbing, all of the lines, you know, they can become soft. It's a cloud, it's not a hard object but we do want to give it form and give it shape. Then I'm doing very little clouds as well just to give us a little bit of depth, a little bit of perceptive. Ah, oh, I was so close to doing this entire take without, uh, I don't know, wording malfunction. But you get the whole idea. I tried to speak very fast because I knew this was going to be a very long video. We were covering a lot of things. So I hope you didn't mind um, me rambling at, you know, like that. But I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. If you want any painting tutorials, let me know. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you have a lovely day. I hope you create something that you love as well. Thank you so much for watching. I truly hope you enjoyed. And again, if you have any questions, if you got stuck along the way, please feel free to leave me a comment or send me a message on my Facebook page. Also, if you just want to share your work with me and get a little critique out of it, please feel free to send it to my Facebook. I'd be more than happy to look at it with you and talk about your work, and I'd love to see it as well. So thank you for watching, and take care. Well, we have reached the end of the video, and I truly hope you enjoyed and that you've learned something. I hope that you can take even a little piece from this and incorporate it within your art and have some fun with it. Now, all of that being said, if you have any questions regarding the tutorial, or you'd like me to critique your work or go through it with you, please feel free to leave me a comment down below. I'd be very happy to help. And if you want more of an immediate response or you'd like to share a picture of your work, please feel free to add me on Facebook. I have a link in the description of this video, and you can add me there, ask me questions, and I'd be incredibly happy to help you and walk you through whatever you are working on. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, if you've enjoyed this tutorial, A, I'm very happy. B, please hit that like button and the subscribe button. It really does help me grow this little art community, and I'm just, I'd be incredibly appreciative if you did. I'm going to release videos weekly, and I just hope you have a wonderful day. So, take care, and again, thank you for watching.